Last episode, I made a start at the new industrial mining town by building my first steam power plant. We also built a train that goes to the nether, steals lava from a giant lake, and feeds it into the power plant. This time, we build our first factory in the new district, and finally come up with a design for a narrow gauge train. And because Pal's Beardy was feeling nice, we already actually have an area to build this. Which is great, because that means we can crack on and just start placing down a foundation straight away, although I should probably sleep first. And the first factory we build over here is going to be our cobblestone factory, because, well, there's a lot of things we can get from cobble in Create. Everything from sand and gravel to shiny things, and even quartz blocks, bricks, and things like that. And as such, the cobble factory is going to be the core of this area. Pretty much everything is going to feed from this one factory, which means it's probably going going to need to be a reasonable size. So I guess I should start placing blocks and figure out where the foundation of this thing is going to be. A few minutes later and I've got a basic foundation down. I've actually just sort of extended it over the edge of this cliff here. I think that's going to look quite nice. And I've laid out roughly what I think I want to do with the build here for this factory. So we're going to have a cobble generator on this side, and then we're going to have lots of storage on this side, and potentially some outside as well. But as this world grows, I do need to start thinking about what chunks we want to leave permanently loaded, and I don't think the cobble generator is necessarily one of them. At least not permanently, but at the start we probably will leave it running for a few weeks. And with that in mind, we just want to make sure we've got lots and lots of space to store as much cobble as possible. I mean, I would like the option to be able to turn off some of these files at some point. Now the question is, do I build the cobble generator first, or do I build the building first? Hmm. I mean, to be honest, cobble generators can be sort of jammed in anywhere, so maybe I should go for the building first. I've got an idea, I think, of how I want this to look and how these buildings are going to be connected. So yeah, let's maybe do the building first. And for this building, I am going to use granite again, I think, at least for this initial one here, but we're going to have other buildings scattered about, and they're going to be using different blocks, but... I, I, well, I've got loads of granite, haven't I? So I think I'm going to use that for now. So let's get the cobble building up first. We'll start off just with a square, I think. And then I think what I might actually do is just have like a little slanty roof bit here. Just have a bit sticking out the front. And then we'll just put a second floor up here. And then I think we're just going to have a sticky outy bit at the top here as well. How does that shape look? All right, I reckon once we get some roofs in like that and then a little roof on top, that could work quite well. It's going to need some windows, though. But for now, let's just get the rest of this building built up, and then we'll slap a roof on it. Well, that's half the roof done, and I've got some window shapes in. I think that's going to work quite nicely. And I'll put a big old door at the bottom here as well. Now, let's just get the other half of this roof in. There we go. We've got the basic shape of the building in. I think that should work quite well. We're going to have to sort out the landscape out the front here so it all links up nicely. And, of course, we've got a lot of detail to put in. But I'm not concerned about that just yet. What I want to do now is actually get the cobble generator in. And for this cobble generator, we're going to be using a design by Batsy. I highly recommend you check it out. I will link to that in the description. But we are going to need to adapt it slightly because I don't think it's actually going to fit in here on reflection. So I guess we're going to make a smaller version of it and possibly two floors. We could probably... We could probably adapt it to do that. Who knows? The important thing that we're taking from Batsy's farm is actually how it works. The scale of it and so on we can mess around with, but the contraption that makes it all do its thing is definitely something that I'm going to need help with. But before we can even start the build, we do need to head back to our main base because we're going to need a bunch of great components for this stuff we haven't even made before. I don't even understand what half of it does, if I'm perfectly honest. But we're going to learn today. And one day we'll sort out these tunnels as well and get these looking a bit nicer. Maybe even later today, depending how this cobble factory goes. So alongside Batsy's tutorial, a schematic has been supplied. So if we do this, we can get that schematic. We'll just put it there for now. We can see what this thing's supposed to look like. And yeah, that's probably not quite going to fit in our building. So we won't be using the schematic cannon, at least not to build it. But we will use it for getting a component list for all of this. And then we'll just adapt that chamber there to fit our building and possibly do another layer as well we'll see but to get our checklist if we put that in there and put the checklist in look at that we can see exactly what we need wonderful so i'm gonna get all this stuff together and i'll meet you back over at the mining town once i'm ready so i'm hoping i've got everything here i need and i've worked out that i need to start building it around here somewhere and we're gonna be building it in that direction so i'm gonna get this built up and if you do want to see how all this works and have all the explanations and things i highly recommend checking out batsy's videos because 
because, well, I don't really understand it very well and I'm not going to be able to do it justice. So I'll bring you back in once it's all crammed in here and working. Well, I have to say that was actually pretty painless in the end. Not that I really understand too much of what's going on, but essentially we have a contraption here. That has got lots and lots of drills on it, which means we don't need to use up any of our power to actually power this thing. We just need it for the belt down here. But this basically just sort of goes backwards and forwards, and that's going to get all of our cobble. It's going to collect it directly into these barrels, and then that's going to get shot out super fast into a vault, which doesn't exist yet. And then there's all this clever redstone-y stuff down here that, yeah, I don't really get what any of that does. So as I say, do go watch Batsy's video for that. But in theory, if we just add some water and then some lava to this, we should be good to go. And convenient we have lots of lava here let's just borrow this for now so we just need to flood this entire bottom level here with water that should just about do it and then we add the lava on top and that is the last lava bucket I guess all we can do now is turn it on and hope it works so we haven't got the belt running just yet we haven't hooked up power but in theory we should just be able to flick this lever and it should just start collecting cobble into these barrels here for now let's give it a go Okay, well, it looks like it's working and doing its thing. There we go. It's getting into rhythm now. Well, that thing is working a treat. Look how quickly it's producing the cobble there. That is amazing. But now we know it works, what I need to do is sort out some storage for this thing. We, of course, need to make the building look nice as well, but we'll do that later. What I need to do now is route some power over here from over there. And that should be easy enough. We've just got to dig a few tunnels. So we'll start here, we'll go that way, and we'll get connected up over in that direction. But this is not exactly going to be thrilling to watch, so I'll bring you back in once we've got power up there. So we have this going at the speed we need it to now nice and fast it's going at full 256 rotation and now comes the big test let's turn it on and hope for the best and hopefully we should just see the cobble going in and out of this barrel here so we're getting 42 cobble every few seconds at the moment that's pretty good but now we know it's working for now let's just get it turned off because we need to sort out the storage properly and for that what we're gonna do is have a secondary building out here i think we're gonna have it sort of a few buildings that are connected and we're gonna ram it full of bolts because i really want the cobble to be able to back up so i think something like that with just a few big doors should work quite well let's just get this built up maybe something that sort of shape could work hmm what do we think well i think i'll run with it for now i'll get a roof on top we'll get some doors in and then we'll see where we're sitting i suppose i should probably also get some vaults inside here but i think literally just jamming some vaults in like that is going to be our best bet there will of course be big ones like this so you just need to make some more vault blocks we don't have many available but we can fill up this building with vaults and then we've got lots and lots of storage for cobble and then potentially even stick another vault or two out the front here that trains can come and collect it from. I think that's probably going to work best for us. But let's get a roof on, make some more vaults and see what we can do. Progress is being made. We've got a roof on, we've got the vaults in and I've even got some doors. But I need to put a hole in this door because I do want to have a vault out here that the train can come along and collect from. A train that doesn't exist yet, but it will. Ah, baby zombies! So I need to go to bed and I need to set up a vault out here. Maybe a couple of vaults. Then if we just set up a couple of belts here as well, then let's get those belts powered. And some in case chain drives should do the trick here just nicely. Then we just need some funnels. Excellent. So that should do the trick there just nicely. And I guess the next thing we're going to need to figure out is where the train is going to go, how it's going to get around. But we don't really have anywhere for it to go just now. So maybe we should save that bit for when we build the second factory, which will need cobble. We've still got a lot of tidying up to do around here, though. I've got a bit of a plan for this area, and I really need to sort out some texturing on these walls. They're looking very bland right now. So I guess it's time to play some montage music. <laughs> enough of the dancing leggy bendy man we've got a bit of a problem so although i've made lots of progress over at the cobble farm i i broke my pickaxe by that i mean i broke both my pickaxes <laughs> 
dumbest thing you could have said. What are you, an idiot? What can I say? I got distracted watching Hornblower and they, I just I just broke them while I was terraforming, okay? I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm saying sorry to you. It's my problem. But basically, that means I need to get myself ooh, some new pickaxes. So I'm going to have to do a bunch of enchanting over here. I'm probably going to need to go and see Rainer and get some mending books as well because I'm pretty sure we don't have any of those left. Nope, no mending books. So yeah, we're going to need to go buy some of them as well. Oh, look at that. Second roll. That's amazing. Oh, and the fourth roll, we got that. All we need to do now, I guess, is combine these to make them efficiency five. That was literally perfect rolls. And look how prepared I was. So we'll have Silky. And then we'll have Fortune. -y. But sadly, I don't have any more netherites. So I guess we're going to have to go do a bit of netherite mining as well. Because I do want these to be netherite picks. And to be honest, I'd quite like to upgrade my armor as well. This is a slight distraction from the build. But to be honest, I think I could use the break anyway, to be fair. And although it wasn't massively effective, we still don't have an endless supply of TNT yet. So I guess we're going to have to go with the nether drill again and just hope for the best. Okay, we've got our contraption. There's nothing else to do but head down there and hope for the best. And I guess we may as well just carry on going this way. It's got plenty of rail and redstone torches. Doesn't have any blocks, but shouldn't need any right at the start anyway. And we're good to go. Give it a nudge. I guess now we just sit back and let the drill do its thing. Twenty minutes and two tunnels later, we've actually had much more success than we did the first time we were here. And we've got ourselves nine ancient debris, which is enough to sort out our two pickaxes, but we're still going to be stuck in diamond for now. I get bored of mining for ancient debris very quickly. Now let's cook this up, get some netherite ingots, grab the smithing templates, and let's get these sorted. Right, all we need now is mending. Oh, it's Renee. It's not even Rainer. I had it wrong the whole time. Look at that, they only cost 10 though. Thank you much, Lee. Stay safe, Renee. Now let's just get mending on both these picks. And we're good. So while I'm here, I'm gonna grab a whole bunch of this. In fact, I think we're gonna make a little bit more. And this is the narrow gauge rail, which is what we're going to be using at the top of the village sort of town area that we're building at the moment, because I want to have some minecarts running around that are going to be transporting items between the different factories. But yes, for that, we need lots and lots of rail. So let's replace this box here temporarily. We'll also take this box of stone out, and then we'll get that loaded up with planks. And if we just take out that and that, and then put this here... And that should be making us some narrow gauge track. We'll just stick a quantify key on these so we can see how we're going. But I'm going to be waiting here for a moment. I guess I need quite a bit of this. Right, that should be enough for now. So let's head back and crack on. So this is where we're at with the build so far. It's still missing some details, but we're definitely making progress. I've tidied up inside here as well. So in the actual cobble factory itself, things are looking a bit nicer. We just need to get some lanterns up. And to be honest, I don't think I like these windows. We're going to get those swapped out too. But before we do any of that, I want to work out the rail system a little bit here. So if I go into free cam and look at the area, what I need to consider is there's a few things going on on so we need to have a few different factories here that are going to be sort of making sand and gravel and other bits and bobs and we're going to need a train system that basically sort of collects everything up from each of the different factories and then takes it off to a central storage depot which needs to connect to the main line here so we're probably actually going to end up with some kind of big storage warehouse underground but for now i just want to focus on how we're going to be transporting items between the different factories we'll sort out the whole cargo thing another day and to be honest i'm quite like in the look of this mountain here and what with this being a mining town maybe if we were to build some kind of mine entrance over here and then have the tracks swooping down going through this factory and then from there as we build up the area we can loop it around all the different factories it needs to i think that's probably going to be the best bet so what i'll do is i'll get the first bit of rail in the bit that's going to go from here all the way up into the mountains and we're going to be using narrow gauge track for this as well and you'll be pleased to know i finally have a decent design for narrow gauge i mean it's quite difficult because there's not many blocks to work with but i think at least for this area i've definitely got a design i'm happy with so we're going to want this rail coming all the way over to here and then we kind of want to swoop it out and round and then up the mountain this is going to be an interesting one first up let's remove this wall and fence with our shiny new pickaxe and have a little look about where we actually want to put the mine entrance so i do quite like the idea of maybe having it here or is that bit a bit small hmm Oh, there's loads going on up here. I mean, I suppose we don't really want it that far back. What is this? Oh, my. 
That place is beautiful. How have I not seen that before? It's literally the other side of the village. Oh, this place looks awesome. Look at that. Oh, we're going to have to do something with this area at some point. The thing is, we built our starter village in a bowl. If only we'd found this bowl. This is much better. Anyway, we're getting distracted here. But now let's just find somewhere to have a mine go into the hill over here. And I wonder. Maybe around here somewhere I think is going to be best. There's already a hole in there as well. Hello, zombie. So I think I'm going to do it here. So let's just make a sort of... Well, I guess we just have the track going into the wall for now. We'll make a proper mine entrance later. So we'll have the track coming out here. And then I guess we're going to want some kind of a block that's going to sit under this. Maybe we should just use girders for now. But yeah, I reckon if we had the mine coming out of there, swooping down this hill and then going onto this bit, that's going to work quite well. But it'd be nice to see the minecarts going up and down. Although we're also going to need to have it going in a loop. So I guess it's going to have to go around here. Go around all the factories. Go back into the mountain, I guess. Then go to main storage and drop off everything. And then loop all the way back up and round and do the whole trip again. It's going to be a very busy train. Might actually need more than one, but let's worry about that later. For now, let's just get a buttload of girders. That should do us. As long as we keep the girders in our offhand, we should be good. So I guess let's start here. And then for now, we'll just connect that to there. But yeah, that's uh, that's an incredibly steep corner. But hopefully, if we connect this up to here, I think what we might have to do is sort of create a different angled mine here. This is, hmm, this is tricky. I'm going to play around with this for a while. And hopefully, when I bring you back in, we'll have some kind of a solution here. Because that is not it. I think I've got a shape I'm happy with. It's fairly steep, but to be honest, it's kind of the only way that I've managed to get it to go up here. We've got a bit of a snaky bend at the top here, but I think once we build a nice supporting bridge, this should look pretty good. And I also still need to sort out the rest of the yard here, get the lights in, get some details on the building. So yeah, time for another mini montage. And then we're going to build a fancy little minecart train. And a short while later, I think we're done down here with the cobble factory. Everything's looking a lot better. We've got big piles of cobble over here. I think that works quite nice. The framed blocks really do help to mess that up a bit. As usual, I've also got piles of barrels that just sort of cover up bits of contraptions and things like that and just add a bit of interest to the area. And I've also swapped out the windows at the front because these ones were a bit intense, but I do like them on the side. So we've got a bit of a mix here, but I think it works. And around the side here, I've now got a sort of girder frame bridge type thing that's holding up the minecart track. And I think that works really well. But with the outside all done, there's one last thing I want to do, but that needs to be done on the inside. And what I'm going to do is put an information board in here. And it does occur to me that in the last episode, I used some threshold switches, but I didn't actually explain what was going on with them and how they worked. But essentially what we we can do is use them to read the contents of inventories. So for example, if we point that at this one here and then we open it, we can see that essentially it reads the threshold. So at the moment, we can see that it is actually 100% full. This is where it currently sits. And it can actually send out a pulse or a redstone signal when it gets to certain levels, which we are going to be making use of elsewhere. But for us, we just need them there so we can attach a display box to them. And we're going to want to read this vault as well. And in fact, I'm going to want to read every single one of these vaults. How many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in total. So we're going to need to use seven of these. But this one here, this sort of first vault, this one's going to be slightly different. Because what I want to do for this one is actually set a threshold switch and use it. So if we grab ourselves a redstone link, and if we put this redstone link on there, we'll give it a unique signal of cobble in the top, and tree bark in the bottom. I'm not going to accidentally use that mix again. And then if we adjust this mechanism over here ever so slightly, so if we just do that, put that on the back of that block, that should start the farm up. And then we'll put a redstone link here with cobble and bark again, and crouch and click with an empty hand, set that to receive. What's now going to happen is when that vault gets to 75% full, so the very last one in the row, it'll turn the farm off because, well, we don't want to keep producing cobble when it hasn't got anywhere to go. But now we've got the threshold switches. If I select the display board this is what we were doing last time with the lava tanks but as i say didn't actually explain what these things down here were but then if we attach that and put vault one we'll keep that as a percentage we'll write that to line one 
and then we've just got to do that for every single vault. So we've got a bunch of information on the board. You can see how we're doing for cobble. I have actually just manually turned it off for now because this thing is loud. Loud noises! So my next step is to actually make the train. And as usual, I have been messing... Where's the station? There it is. I have been messing around in creative for this because trains are hard. We did wing it with the last train we built, the lava one. But with this one, it's a lot trickier because it's a narrow gauge train. And I wanted to make it try and look a little bit better than our previous attempts, which were awful, let's be honest. So first thing, let's uh, maybe get rid of that creeper. So for this train, we're going to be keeping it very simple, but hopefully it'll look okay. And I've already forgotten what it looks like. Right, I've had a quick look in the creative world, and the first thing we need to do is to switch this out. We want that one there. We'll have a slopey thing there. A valve on the back. We're going to put the seat on there. Vertical slab behind. Brass ladders on the sides. And copycat panels. We'll come back to those in a minute. Train controls. Then a girder and a smokestack. And if I stick a temporary block there, we should be able to get one of these weird slopey corners on. Same on that side. Put some andesite bars in these copycat frames. Look at that. And that is our tiny steam engine. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's definitely better than what we had before. But now it's about to get better. So let's do the little trolley things behind it. So the first thing we'll put in is a storage interface. And we'll stick a barrel on that side. We'll crack out the frame slopes again. Get the framed slab edges on round here. Framed slope like that and that. Framed cube in the middle. And then we just need some cobble. Look at that. <laughs> Oh, I love it. So simple, but it really is effective. And it's got storage as well. It can only store 27 stacks, but that's going to be more than enough. But this little train is going to be going around and collecting five different resources. So we're going to need five carriages here. So I'm just going to duplicate this four more times and then I'll bring you back in. There we go. So we've got cobble, gravel, sand, scoria and limestone, which are the things we're going to be producing in the first few factories at least. And I've also swapped out the wheels because these things looked ridiculous with those big wheels on. I've also glued it all together and in theory, I should should just be able to make this into a train now and i'm clicking assemble train but it doesn't seem to want to do it and it's not telling me why what's your problem i mean i'll be honest i don't see any problems maybe let's just try replacing the station i don't understand why can't i make you into a train let's try breaking that and see if i can at least turn the engine into a train i can but you don't like your bogeys? Well, let's just try and connect it one carriage at a time and see what's going on. Okay, so that second carriage works. That one's fine. Still fine. There's got to be a problem with one of you last two. That's fine. Is there a problem with the last one then? It's exactly the same as the others. I wonder. Okay, so I can assemble it as long as the track wasn't extended. I wonder if there's a problem with the track further back then. And this train is going to need a name. Of course it is. I'll call it the Tiny Minecart Train for now, but that could really do with a name. And I guess this is just the cobble factory, isn't it? That's easy enough. So let's reconnect this. And then I'm going to reverse the train all the way up the hill. Mainly just to make sure my track is in fact connected. And I think that's actually going to look pretty cool driving around. But it looks like we're connected just fine. So now we know where the train is. We just need to line up the collection system. So let's get some girders. I love girders so much. So our storage interface is underneath that block there. So it's at uh, da -da -da, two heights. So we could put this one there. I think that's going to work. Yeah, look at that. That still connects. Excellent. And the fact that they can connect through things is just amazing. So let's just make this a little bit more stable. Now we need to work out how we're getting the cobble from here up to here. I have a feeling we might need to do it here. So we have a shaft there, then one up there, which will get connected. And then we're going to need more shafts. Then we'll connect that up to there, but I have actually run out of belts, so we're going to have to go get another belt at some point. We'll stick a single vault up there with an exit funnel from the vaults and another one there. In fact, if we make the vault too wide like that, I think that's just going to look a little bit better. I do, however, need a few more bits to get this finished off. I'm back with more belts and I've got some andesite casing as well. That's going to be helpful. And I've got the encased chain drives. We're going to be needing them as well. Now to get this linked up to this. And there we go. That's all working. 
working. I've actually ended up linking it up around the back this way instead. And now the train's full. That has stopped. And it's, well, that's going to be sitting here for quite a while now because we don't have anywhere for it to go. But I like that setup. We're looking pretty good and the train looks cool too. We're making some good progress. And about an hour or so later, we're making even more progress. So I've put in the mine entrance over here now. I've only done the actual entrance bit. If we go in a little bit further, you'll see that it kind of trails off. We've just got a loop in here at the moment. But eventually, this is going to connect up to the end of the track. It's going to be a big loop inside the mountain. It's going to be a lot of fun. But I like how this cave entrance has come out. I didn't put too much thought into it. I just sort of used what leftover frame blocks I had scattered around. But these little piles of mud and stone and bits like that do really make a difference. And I've also just given a little bit of thought to what the track's going to do over here. And I think because we're going to have another factory up the top there, it makes sense to have the rail go here. And we could just feed it from above. But we're going to tackle that the rest of next episode. Because sadly, that's all we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.